Hi, you guys, welcome back to the channel. Well, so the most disappointing thing just happened. I was actually filming the uh, bookcase SHTF box and in the middle of opening it, uh, I realized that uh, the box that I was given was uh, February's box. So that's just, uh, I don't know, really super disappointing. But anyway, we're gonna continue with an unboxing because here's a Paco's box. A pocket box uh, subscription. Now, I've never gotten a different type of size box. This is not their usual typical box, but uh, you use this to open it and uh, see what we've got here. All right. Well, it looks like we're gonna start off the top. Actually, let's actually grab the card first here. Bunch of stuff in here. Cards on the very bottom. Here is the box. It looks like we have a theme. So this is the April 2024, and it's uh, Tuck2. Uh, Tuck2, and is, if I remember right, is uh, like a Inuit or... I don't know if they're Alaskan or if they're... I remember seeing this video on YouTube. Uh, if you can look it up if you want. Uh, basically, I don't know if they're... Yeah, I think maybe it's Inuit. Let's see, we've got some information right here. The Tuck2 documentary series was produced by National Film Board of Canada between uh, 1966 and 68 to learn about the traditional Inu Inuit culture from this fascinating series. Yeah, so that's, so they're from Canada. Uh, the series documents cultural practices, skills, and values in Nunavut, uh, Northern Canada. Each episode focuses on a different topic and does a good job of celebrating the skills resource and resourcefulness of the Inuit. The territory of the Inuit, also called Eskimo, and then a couple other names that I'm not going to be able to pronounce. Covers the northern and western regions of Alaska, northern Canada, and Greenland. They continue to live in these areas and maintain many cultural traditions while also incorporating some modern technology. They continue to have a deep respect and spiritual connection with the land. If you want to watch the series, you can do so here. If you guys would like to do that, you can pause this video and then type it down. But they have some really cool stuff. So anyway, let's got a contents list here. Got a few items, one, two, three, four, five. And then of course we have our skills challenge on the back. So I don't know what the heck was going on with the camera, but the lens was a little dirty. All right, so we've got on the first item, we have a 60 by 84, 50% wool blanket. Uh, Creek's got something written down here and he says, one thing uh, that Tuck2 and his family could have used is a good quality wool blanket. Uh, wool blankets are a critical piece of kit, not only for cold weather camping, but also for at-home emergencies. You can never have too many warm blankets on hand if the grid goes down. They can be used to stay warm, zone off rooms, and much more. This 50% version is lighter weight than a full 100% wool, makes it more practical for taking on the trail. It's a perfect tool for a blanket chair, a bed roll, or sleeping bag liner. Wool for the win, we had to use... <laughs> Wool for the win, we had to use a bigger box for this one. And he's correct. So here we go. First item. I do like the fact that... Uh, Camp USA on there. And uh, this is a really big blanket. So... The wife will enjoy it. She always gets all my blankets that I get from subscription boxes. So yeah, there we are. Uh, nice. Oh, that's actually a pretty heavy blanket even though it's lightweight. So the next thing we got is we got a six inch splitting wedge. As I watched Tuck 2's father split up driftwood to make parts and pieces for the ocean kayak, I couldn't help but think about how valuable a lightweight and durable splitting wedge would be for camp craft. I see many steel versions, but never something I'd consider carrying with me. I finally worked with a manufacturer to make one from a lightweight plastic polymer. Bright, 
yellow to prevent from being lost. You can use this wedge to help make items around camp or even a kayak. And here we are. Um, I never thought about carrying one of these on me, actually. This is really light. And uh, that is pretty hard. I don't think you're going to be cracking that none. So, yeah. I guess some teeth for biting on there. But anyway, cool. I will definitely throw this in a pack. Never thought about it. So, it's one reason why I like a pocket box and these other boxes is there's stuff that you just never would think about. So, all right. So, the next item we've got is a 24 inch expandable metal bellows. These are really handy. Really, really handy. All right. It's got a little. Little woven little case right there. What does he got to say about this? When the temps are freezing and the wood is whipping, an ex expandable bellows can make all the difference when coaxing a small ember into a flame. At just a few inches, at just a few inches long collapse, this one expands to full 24 inches. The grip is hat wrapped with a comfortable material that won't freeze your fingers in cold weather. It can also be used as an emergency emergency straw or coal burning tube. Add this to your fire kit today. What is a coal burning tube? I don't know if I've ever heard of that. Hmm. Anyway, let's check this out and see what we've got here. All right. Oh yeah, very nice and I like the stitching on there. Yeah, it works pretty good. Yes, this will definitely go in my fire kit. But I have to figure out which one because I have many fire kits. <laughs> I have several get home bags and bug out bags. So I'll have to see which one I prefer this to be in. Uh, the next, what we got here is we got the Tuck 2 knife kit. I am, And uh, Creek says, I am always enamored by the cutting tools used by indigenous cultures. They always amaze me at what they can accomplish with such simple tools. When I saw the knife used in the Tech 2 documentary series, I knew that I had to recreate it for you to make it at home for your own use. Its small, unique blade and simple handle were used in crafting kayak, making a more. It was, I'm sure, an invaluable tool for them and his family. To my knowledge, there is nowhere else in the world where a knife of this style can be purchased. When you're finished making yours, it would be, it will be one of a kind. You can buy a regular knife anywhere, but these are the types of projects we pride ourselves here at a pocket box using closed kit instructions to make your own very tuck two knife at home or around camp all right so these are what's cool about a pocket box let's see here let's see what he provides in this kit now i have a lot of these in a bag over there that i've just never gotten around to all right so there's your there's your blade, hand forged, and then a little block of wood here, right? Not sure uh, how we're going to. No way we'll like it to uh, hold. I'm trying to figure out how the. I haven't, he didn't give any wax with this, so I'm confused. How the heck does he want us to? Alright, well, this is from a company called it called Reptile Knife Works, or Reptile Tool Works, by the way. But, usually they give a little ball of wax. I'm not sure how he's going to do this. I'm going to have to look into it later. So... A burned in socket will grip tight. Looks like this is the way the tray you'll like it. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, usually it gives me like a little wedge of glue. Matter of fact, I think I have some around here. So I'll probably just use it. Anyway, it's a cool little piece right there. Actually, I can actually show you what I was talking about. Usually, because I haven't done this knife yet. Usually he provides you these. So here's another knife kit I haven't done yet. This was the Sheep Rock Shelter Knife. And uh, we should look into that. 
Oh, and here's another one, Hoko knife. None of these we've done. So we've got some kits that we need to do on this channel, you guys. So maybe we'll do more of that in the summertime. But anyway, so that's it. that's that for that one. Um, we've got the bomb net. So we've got a net here. And here we are. This is called a bomb net. Interesting. Um, although the style of net wasn't in the Tuck 2 documentary, I'm sure they would have loved to have it. The bomb net is a unique style of gill net that is crazy effective. Simply fill the metal basket on the top of the net with bread or chum that fish will eat and drop the net into the water. As fish go for the bait in the basket, they are caught in the invisible netting that floats below the surface. It is possible to catch more than a dozen fish in a few seconds using this net. This would make an awesome addition to the survival fishing kit. Note, uh, so he's basically telling us to ensure that we uh, check with our local fishing laws and regulations before you can use any gill nets. I'm pretty sure I can't use this around here. But you know what? In a survival situation, we're going to use it. So, All right, so on to the Apocalbox Skills Challenge. The Inuit Harpoon Tip. Okay. So the skills challenge for this month is to make an authentic Inuit style harpoon tip replica. An indige indigenous Inuit people carved harpoon points from bone and antler and then fitted those points with a sharpened slate tip. This harpoon point was then pressure fitted with the end of a harpoon shaft and attached to a long tether kept in the hand. When thrust in the seal or fish, the harpoon point would come off the tip of the shaft and lodge into the animal. The hunter would then use the tether to pull the quarry up onto shore. It is an incredible bit of, a, bit of an primitive technology. Use the included materials and instructions to master this craft for yourself. All right, let's see what we got here. Ooh, sorry about that. Didn't mean to. All right, so it's a slate tip. So basically, this one's going to be a little tricky here. So he's giving us some slate. And then some instructions. Quite a bit of instructions. And I feel like this one's going to be a lot more difficult to, uh, to do here. Yeah. Shaft. I'm not sure what. Yeah. Well, this is interesting. Maybe hope he provides a video on this because. So the end of the stick goes in here and then. Yeah, somehow. Very interesting. Yeah, this one's going to be difficult to do. So. Anyway, guys, so that's going to be it for Apocalbox. A um, couple cool little kits to do, of course. And then, of course, the wife's going to enjoy the blanket. I'll tell you that. And a uh, couple knife kits. We'll put them together. Really wish Bud K wouldn't have screwed me over like that. I mean, it's $100 for a double box. Although February was a cool box, but I'm going to have to give them a call and see if they're going to just rectify or do fix anything. But, um, so yeah, guys, this was the Tuck 2 box. Uh, pretty cool stuff. And, um, that's going to be it for today's video. So until next time, guys, have a good one.